Missouri fourth grader Elizabeth Olton is still missing. And when investigators search her neighbor's home, they uncover disturbing writings in the diary of the oldest sister, 15-year-old Alyssa Bustamante. The agent collects the diary as potential evidence. The next morning, now Friday, in two days since Elizabeth went missing, Alyssa is brought to the FBI headquarters for an interview with Sergeant David Rice. In combination with her strange behavior, uh, I was confident that we were going into an interrogation at some point. But just before he goes in, the sergeant is handed Alyssa's diary. The last entry of the diary, which was the day that Elizabeth went missing, was completely scratched out. But this cop is determined to bring darkness into light. Using backlighting, we could make out two words. Slit and throat. Armed with potential incriminating evidence, it's go time. Alyssa, her grandmother, Sergeant Rice, and a juvenile officer file into the interrogation room. Sergeant Rice decides to take it slow and easy, but mostly slow. By asking Alyssa certain questions and then just waiting. And waiting. Silence is very effective during an interview or interrogation because people feel very uncomfortable in silence. There were pauses, I believe, that were up to 45 seconds to a minute long. And you could see the stress affecting Alyssa. You could see her eyes begin to tremor and her head begin to shake. And then right when the sergeant thinks she might break. We have your diary and we've read your diary, even the last entry in which was scribbled out and I just waited. The effect is immediate. Once I brought up the diary, I could see a distinct shift in her demeanor, and I think it was that point that she knew that we knew. And that's when Alyssa finally starts to reveal what happened to Elizabeth. She tells Sergeant Rice it was an accident. She said they were walking in the woods when Elizabeth fell, hit her head, and suddenly died. I explained to Alyssa that we were going to recover the body and the autopsy would show every injury. And he has a pretty good idea of what one of the injuries could be. Due to the comment or the word that we read from her diary. That's when he asked Alyssa a direct and damning question. Was her throat cut? And Alyssa said yes. And that's when grandmother, uh, the grandmother broke down and began crying. It's a huge break in the case. Alyssa's grandmother leaves the room and the 15-year-old comes clean. She said she sent Emma, her sister, over to the Olton household to pick Elizabeth up. From that point, she claimed that she told Emma to go back home and that she took Elizabeth by the hand and walked her into the woods. It's a quarter mile and 15 minute walk into the woods, leaving plenty of time for Alyssa to think about what she is doing and stop. But she continues on, holding the nine year old's hand and saying, I've got something really neat to show you. It's just a little bit further up here. Unbeknown to the little girl, Alyssa is armed with a kitchen knife and is leading her towards a pre-dug grave. Alyssa said once she arrived at the, at the side of the hole, that she began to strangle uh, Elizabeth while she was facing her, that she strangled her multiple times and stabbed her in the chest, I believe six or seven times, and then cut her throat. After her confession, Alyssa agrees to take Sergeant Rice to Elizabeth's body. Rice takes me along into the same woods where he retraces and recalls that fateful day. She knew exactly you know, where it was, led us directly to it. Was it well covered? It was not well covered. Once she pointed out the area and you looked a little bit closer, you could see that she was only a few, you know, a, a few inches, if that, under the ground. And you could see body parts uh, that, that came up you know, covered with mud. It's a pretty horrifying homicide. Then the results of Elizabeth's autopsy come in and they appear to mirror Alyssa's diabolical diary. Investigators use a blue light to finally reveal her last entry on the day Elizabeth disappeared. It reads in part, I just expletive killed someone. I strangled them and slit their throat and stabbed them. It was amazing. It's pretty enjoyable. I gotta go to church now, LOL. 
this was very premeditated uh, by the 15-year-old murderer because she had dug the grave holes at least five days in advance of the murder. And it was premeditated in the sense that she sent her sister down to get Elizabeth out of the house for the purpose of murdering her. A premeditated and planned murder meets the legal requirements for a first degree murder case. But what about her age? Alyssa is just 15. She was certified to stand trial as an adult and a Cole County grand jury uh, uh, heard evidence in the case and returned an indictment of two counts, murder in the first degree and armed criminal action. And sadly, the signs of a troubled teen seemed to be there all along. Alyssa appeared to like hurting herself and others. On her YouTube page, Alyssa lists under interest and hobbies, killing people and cutting. And a week before she killed Elizabeth, Alyssa takes to her journal and writes, if I don't talk about it, I bottle it up. And when I explode, someone's gonna die. But perhaps the biggest warning sign appears at Alyssa's own 15th birthday party. She is hanging out with her best friend Jennifer when she says, I just wonder what it would be like just to kill someone, see the life just drain out of someone. I wonder what it would feel like, that type of power, to take that away from someone. That is one of the most reprehensible motives for murder that exist in humankind, and that is to murder a person for the thrill of murdering them. Two years and four months after the fateful events that rocked the rural town of St. Martin's, Missouri, a trial date is finally set. Then the prosecution gets an unexpected setback to their case, and it's a big one. The uh, defense filed a motion to suppress the confession. Alyssa's defense team claims because she was a juvenile, some of the questions asked during her interrogation weren't allowed under Missouri law. The judge agrees, and Alyssa's confession is thrown out. Having the confession suppressed was, was a huge blow. Uh, this was a clear first-degree murder case. And there's another big blow to the prosecution's case on the horizon. The U.S. Supreme Court is about to likely rule that life sentences without the possibility of parole for juveniles is unconstitutional. So prosecutors offer up a plea deal to the defense, an amendment to murder in the second degree with a range of 10 to 30 years or life imprisonment with the chance of parole. I notified the mother and the family that that's what I had determined to do. I was mad. It was very bad. Alyssa's defense team accepts the plea deal. During the sentencing phase, she addresses her victim's family and states, I cannot even understand what you guys are going through. I'm sorry for that. If I could give my life to bring her back, I would. And I'm sorry. I don't think she can be sorry. I don't believe anything that she says. She was being fed what to say to us from her attorney. So none of it was real. Bustamante was sentenced on the murder charge to life in prison with a chance of parole, plus 30 years for armed criminal action. Under Missouri law, she will serve 35 years and five months before she will be eligible for parole. Even her one-time best friend wonders now if that's enough. I don't think there is anywhere that she should be besides prison ever because you just can't get away with something like that. Is there anything you would say to her if she was watching this? Um, that I hate her, that she's ruined everyone in my family's life. She changed everybody's life so drastically. It's not fair. She shouldn't be sitting in prison. She should die too. I don't care how old she was. Age didn't have anything to do with it. There's no rehabilitation for her. Following Alyssa's conviction, Elizabeth's mother filed a wrongful death lawsuit against Bustamante's grandparents and siblings. She was awarded $400,000 in a settlement. She's also sued Alyssa herself to ensure that the killer teen cannot profit from her crime. No books, no movies, nothing.